Hello and welcome back to Educator.com and welcome back to Biochemistry. So today we're going to start our discussion of lipids, another major class of biological macromolecule. Remember we have lipids, we have uh, carbohydrates, we have proteins, and we have nucleic acids, four major classes. So today we're going to start talking about lipids. And we're going to start our discussion with the simplest of them, uh, fatty acids and the triacylglycerols. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, lipids are a profoundly, profoundly diverse group of uh, biological macromolecule. So, lipids are a profoundly diverse group of biological macromolecule. Grow molecule, their common feature, but they do have one common feature. So their common feature, among all of these, their common feature, they are not soluble in water. They are not soluble in water. That's their common defining feature, as far as a lipid is concerned. They're going to be soluble in, in organic solvents. They're going to, be, as far as you know, working in the lab is concerned, or they're going to be soluble in other fats. So they are not soluble in water. Okay, now their biological functions are as diverse as their structures. Biological functions are as diverse as their structures. So the particular function that we're going to talk about today as far as fatty acids and triacylglycerols is fuel storage. That's one function that fats serve. It's a primary function that they serve is the storage of, it's, it's a reserve, it's a fuel reserve is what it is. So. So lipids as fuel storage, lipids as fuel storage. We, we remember in, when we were talking about carbohydrates, we said that glycogen was actually a form of fuel storage. It is a short-term form of fuel storage. Fat, um, the triacylglycerols, fatty acids, lipids, they're long-term storage. So storage. And so we have a bunch of fatty acid derivatives. So we're going to talk about fatty acids first, and then we're going to talk about its simplest derivative, the triacylglycerol. Okay, so a fatty acid, very, very simple. I don't know why they have all these, you know, different names for things that we already know. So a fatty acids, acid is just a carboxylic acid a carboxylic acid whose hydrocarbon portion whose hydrocarbon portion or chain chain runs from 4 to about 36 carbons that's it and this actually includes this number, this includes the carbonyl carbon. This includes the COO carbon. Okay, so let's just quick example. I'll do it in, I'll do this one in line form because it's often best to represent these in line um, representations. So that's two. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Just have to keep track of how many we have. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, that is correct. I'll put the final one there. Something like that. So this is a C8 fatty acid. So this is a C8 fatty acid. That's it. It's just a carboxylic acid with a certain length of chain. In this particular case, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. So we can write it as, let me go to, uh, let me go to blue here. We can write it as, oop, oh, you know what? That's fine. I'll just keep it as black. So CH3, CH26, and then C. O, O, H. You'll often see it like that. CH3, that's the last one. We have these CH2 groups. We have six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then, of course, we have our carboxyl group, the COOH. That is this thing right here. So you'll often see them in a shorthand written like that. This is N octanoic acid. Right? That's how we name the carboxylic acids. Um, propanoic acid, butanoic acid, uh, pentanoic acid. We take the pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, and we just add oic acid. That's it. That's all it is. It's a carboxylic acid with just a really long carbon chain, generally from 4 to 36. That's all. Nice and simple. Okay. So a couple of more definitions here. Let's go to blue. Now a saturated fatty acid, which you hear about all the time. Fatty acid, and I'm going to start writing Fa for that. The hydrocarbon chain, it just, it's just a fatty acid where the hydrocarbon chain has no double bonds. Has no double bonds. In other words, it's saturated with as many hydrogens as you can stick onto the carbons. That's it. That's all that saturated means. You're, you've put on as many hydrogens as you can. The molecule that we just saw, it's fully saturated. There's no double bonds. It's all carbon-carbon single bonds. And when the carbon is not bonded to another carbon, it's bonded to hydrogens. That's all. So an unsaturated is exactly what you think. Unsaturated. Or polyunsaturated, you'll often hear that, polyunsaturated. It is a fatty acid with one or more double bonds along the chain, with one or more double bonds. So you'll often hear of a monounsaturated fatty acid, it has one double bond. You'll hear of a polyunsaturated fatty acid that has two, three, four, six, nine double bonds, however many. So let's do a saturated example, which we actually just did, but what the heck, we'll do it again. So a saturated example, we'll have, let's say, CH3, let's have CH218, and let's have COOH. So we have one carbon, 18 carbons, and one more carbon, so this is N icosanoic acid. Um, icosa is uh, Greek for 20. So now the N here, the N part, N icosanoic acid, that just means there's no, there's no branching in the chain. It's just straight chain. There's no strange branching going on. So N just means there is no branching in the chain. That's all. And what I mean by branching is, let's say, if you have something like this, um, let's say you have uh, this, uh, branching would mean you know, something like that. There's no branching. It's just a straight chain of 20 carbons. OK. So now let's do an unsaturated example. So an unsaturated example Let's actually draw this one out. So let's see how many carbons have I got? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's go uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'll go, uh, how about going down like that? Double bond. And then one, boom, boom. That's always interesting when you have to start counting these carbons. Um, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we have this. Okay, so let's make sure we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is our eight carbon. This is our number one. This is nine. This is 10. It's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, so we have 18 carbons on this one. So this is, this happens to be cis, nine, octa, decanoic acid. Cis tells me, the cis nine tells me that at the nine carbon, starting with the number one carbon of the carbonyl, at the nine carbon is where the double bond starts. So between nine and 10, that's where the double bond is. Cis tells me it's the cis configuration, not the trans configuration. Octadec is 18. That means it has 18 carbons total. Decenoic acid, that means there's an alkene, which is this thing. There you go, that's all. This is the systematic name. Common name. So all of these have systematic names and all of these have common names. This is oleic acid. It is one of the primary components of olive oil, the fatty acid in the triacylglycerol that actually makes up olive oil, oleic acid. Okay, so and again, take notice of the E in there because it's, so it's not octadecanoic acid. That would be just the saturated version, 18 carbons, decanoic acid. That's actually telling me that I have an alkene in there. It's a little redundant because you have the cis9, but now there it is. Okay.